My daughter was one pound three ounces when she was born. Because of how small she was, she had a brain bleed, and the neurosurgeon told us she had hydrocephalus. And we never heard the word before in our life. The doctor took one look at her and put her in the operating room that day. It was so scary, very, very scary. I believe it was like four o'clock in the morning, and my husband and I sat there and we said, Hydro what? When your child is two days old and you're being told that he's going in for his first brain surgery and it's probably not the last, you have no idea what, what to expect. When she came out, she didn't even look like herself. Her head was three centimeters smaller. Post-hemorrhagic hydrocephalus means hydrocephalus that occurs after bleeding in the brain and it occurs in premature babies and it's one of the most common causes of hydrocephalus. The younger the infant, the more premature, the more chance of them having it. The fact that our neonatology has improved to the point where these infants are surviving means that there's going to be more infants with post-hemorrhagic hydrocephalus. Grant was shunted and he was two days old. He is uh, shunt dependent. My daughter um, has had eight revisions. She had four revisions in the month of April 2014. It was a horrible, horrible month. He's endured 12 shunt revisions in 10 years. You live in fear with this condition, unfortunately. I think about his hydrocephalus daily. There is a shunt that is in his head and he'll need it forever. There's no cure for hydrocephalus. The Hydrocephalus Association support is critical to the mission of eventually finding a cure. We now have a pipeline from the basic science lab to the clinical lab, both in children and in adults, and back to the basic science lab. HCRN is a group of hospitals that works with children that are being treated and tests those treatments. HANDS is a group of scientists that work in labs. What HA has done is create a ecosystem for hydrocephalus investigators. The clinicians are informing the researchers what to look for. The labs in hands that are working on different PHH problems. Once those are ready, they can come to HCRN and we can test them. We've got a network now of 14 hospitals that work together and about 20 investigators that are experts in clinical research. We already have the infrastructure set up we can collaborate together, take their discoveries, and see how they work for the patients that we treat every day. And children who come through the pediatric network can be followed in the adult network at some of the centers. There's so much we don't understand about shunting. There's so much we don't understand about pathophysiology of hydrocephalus. Everybody wants to do work that's clinically relevant to bring those benchtop experiments to clinical trials. As a single independent lab, you can't solve all the problems by yourself. Now you have 20 different other investigators you can work together with. That's the great advantage. Our goal is injury prevention, and our goal is hydrocephalus cure. That should be a medical therapy and not a surgical one. Without the Hydrocephalus Association, the research will not get done. We know that with time, with money and resources, we will see an advancement in technologies that really benefits those that are affected. And yes, hopefully, Someday we will see a cure. A shunt is not a cure, unfortunately. We need better research, we need better shunts, we need better treatments for hydrocephalus so that these kids can lead normal lives. I would love my daughter to be able to live the rest of her life without wondering when that ticking time bomb is going to go off again. I want her to be an independent and happy, successful member of society. I want a cure. <laughs>